Good morning, friends. Welcome to a live recording with Lincoln Design Co. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It looks like we have a, a little bit of a delay on the feed. Hopefully that will uh, that will pass here and we'll, we'll we'll catch up as we get going. This is a fun project, and on, on scale wise, now we're looking at branding a a product for for a business. So, Dan, the last time it was a handful of guys for three days. How do the early rollouts for a project like this get passed over to the troops? Um, it, it depends. Like this was an interesting project because so Seaside uh, Brewing Company is a, a Seaside is a little beach town here in Oregon mm-hmm. uh, on the Oregon coast. Um, so they came to us and and basically they they were trying to re- rebrand the, the brewery. They had a studio in Seattle working on it mm-hmm. that had done a, a bunch of designs, bunch of comps, but the ask from them was a little bit, a little weird as far as what they were looking for. It, it needed some illustration work mm-hmm. first to kind of kick it off. And the studio in Seattle wasn't really hitting the mark as far as what they were looking for. Got it. So they basically came to us and, and they came to us with the, knowing that we had a background in skateboarding and skateboard graphics and things like that, because they wanted something that reflected that or something that was just a little bit more illustrated. So, um, so this first slide is basically showing their old logo top, top, right. They're building, they're in an old, uh, it was an old police station. Oh, wow. Downtown seaside. So they basically renovated that. It's a cool old, old school building. Um, so they've always had this vibe with this octopus that you see in that logo there. Yeah. Um, so they didn't want to veer too far away from that. And that's their original branding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. The top, right. Yeah. Got it. But so the, the weird thing is when the client came to us, his, his main focus was on the bottom, right. You see that it's a tap handle. It's this, this here. So it's a tap handle. That's an octopus's arm, you know? Mm Mm-hmm to serve the beer. So he had a bunch of these made and basically their, their current logo, like there's a spot in the middle. A right. Circle. Where that would just plug right in there. Yeah. Where he basically needed a logo to plug right in there. Um, and his current logo didn't do that. So the idea was let's start with designing a cool S octopus S to fit in here. And then from that, we'll build out the rest of the branding, which is kind of a weird ass because it was basically like, just design me something, a little icon to go in this circle. And, and after you're done with that, then we'll, then we'll build, build out the rest of the project. So it's kind of reverse. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a reverse um, kind of branding project. So well, let me tell you why I love that. Why you bring that up though, because they don't teach anybody in school. So sometimes your client's going to come up to you and say, I need this little piece of the puzzle because that's where I'm stuck with my business. But this is insanely real world information that many of us don't get a do tour where they go, okay, so in three months, we're going to do these two big events. There's a winter one. There's a summer one. We need all of these deliverables. We know that we're going to be wrapping a half pipe. We know we're going to be doing a street course for skate and snow. Like a lot of times you will get somebody that comes to you like, look, I'm in a pickle. I'm working with another agency. I don't like the work. I've bought 500 of these things. I just need a belt buckle that goes on this thing. Can you make that piece for me? And then we go from there. That is insanely so much more realistic than, than do series for most people that do this for a living. Yeah. Well, it was a challenge because actually the studio in, in Seattle, the stuff wasn't bad. Yeah. Like it was the, Decent. So a lot of times, like to me, that's always a red flag. Like when, when a client shows you something and you're like, it's not amazing, but at the same time, it's not horrible. You right. Know? They're going, this just isn't it. Like we need something, you know, way better or, or whatever. And you're thinking, okay, you know, I'm pretty confident we can do better, but it's you know, like, I feel, I, I felt like the expect- expectations were through the roof, you know, like it's got to get 10 times better than this. You know, I'm looking at what they had. I'm like, I don't know if there is 10 times better than this because this isn't that bad. Great insight on, you know, if somebody sends you just a mess, you can go, well, this is a mess. And the guy got overcharged and these people bit off more than they can chew. But when the work is quality, you know, maybe not as good as what you can do, but it's quality and, and there's a lot of problems, then you really know, okay, this is somebody that we really need to do a lot of hand holding on and managing expectations because obviously this is a very specific shopper, you know, that, um, that is going to go to the car lot 
and go around the entire vehicle on delivery date and goes, this window seal is an eighth of an inch off from the other window seal. I don't want this car. You know what I mean? Like, and there are people that are that fanatical when they're buying something and Hey, it's their money. They can be that picky if they choose to be so smart on you for having that, that, that insight of like, okay, there's a little bit of client relationship stuff that we need to work on. Uh, you can see now up on the screen, a, a still photo of the, the beer tap that sort of was the, the beginning of this problem. And then I'm assuming that same, um, logo, Dan, that's going to need to go over to this uh, barrel that we see lit up on a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And that barrel is like 16, 18 feet in the air. It's a huge, like a huge barrel. Um, so that too, he wanted, you know, he was like, the logo needs to sit here as well. These are my two mm. like points that I want. I want this thing to look amazing in, in these two spots. So, and we have a circle and we have an oval similar, but not the same. So the, the, therefore we have to not dedicate ourselves to, too much like the aid logo or the the lincoln logo that we have up on screen right now would look amazing in the tap could look a little bit weird like an egg yolk in that oval so um i know what we're going to look at next and now it all makes a lot of sense to me so this is we'll, we'll look at this right now this is the actual work that you guys produce to fit into the tap yeah so these are the sketches um so the this was the issue we kind of, we kept running into and, and which I feel like the, the previous client did as well. I mean, at what point does it look like a worm? Um, sure. A slug, you know, like a slug that is cut in half. Like, how do you, how do you tell that that's an octopus and still, still make it a nest? Even the tentacles. And if you have the tap handle, you have like double tentacles going on. So it's like tentacles on tentacles on tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funky you know so that's where as we get deeper you'll see we kind of pitch some different ideas that ended up working a little better i have to say though the range on these eight tentacle s's is just phenomenal from being you know really really graphic to looking somewhat um severed to being illustrated uh to me the Man, every time I get ready to say this one's my favorite one, then another one messes with my mind. But the bottom right and uh, the, the the top right, sort of that Jim Phillips, Santa Cruz type vibe, that just always sucks me in because that's where I learned how to illustrate and how, you know, that's where I saw the word the world first. So I really, really like those two. But then, man, oh, man, like whichever one of you guys did that, that third one. Uh, uh, on the top row. I mean, that is just a full on illustration that also makes an S and you know, that with the proper amount of patina and like wear and tear on it would look phenomenal painted on that barrel out front of the business. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But to a drunk guy at a bar, how well would you be able to see that on the tap? So we have a lot of things in play here. Yeah, exactly. So then with the, with this pitch, um, you'll see the, the top left, Davey actually worked out like, can we do an S? Can we work? Can we make it a whole octopus and have the S Davey. as the negative space? So that's where you're seeing those top left ones. Yeah, that, that looks really, really cool. So was this a decision that you guys made or did you send this over to the client? And then that got the conversation that we needed to go over to here. No, this was something that we, from the, from the get go, we we're like, we, Cause I kind of knew right away, none of these, like this definitely not, not it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, without having an octopus sitting next to those ones on the bottom, you know, like, what are you looking at? Yeah. That, Is it a shoe tread? Yeah. Like, that yeah. A yeah. What's up? Yeah. So it was definitely like, okay, let's, let's pitch some a full blown octopus as well and see what he thinks. So these are all sketch sketch phase as well. Wow. Yeah. The, you make a good point where, you know, we know what the brief is. We know what you're talking about, but those bottom, those bottom right S's, I mean, is real graphic and it's real fun, but it looks like it could be its own Loch Ness monster. Or like you said, like for a sneaker company, if that's the sneaker tread, or it could be S for suction cup, like uh, who knows what we're looking at. So yeah. now we're actually going to do the, whatever designer loves to do that real world mock-up so that you have context in reality. So, you know, we we're trying to show that, hey, yeah, these do can fill the area, you know, that you're asking for. But, yeah. but what does it look like? You know, I, I love the fact that, you know, the two on the left, how they go into the water and out of the water. Like, right. That's great. But 
I think again, you'd, you would have to cut it off to make it, you know, read as like a tentacle Mm -hmm. on the octopus. The tentacle doesn't have two ends, you know, on it. Now it's a worm. Yeah. Cause one is coming from the, uh, from the animal itself. Yeah. So I was actually, this is where this interview, this interview gets weird. I was interviewing Brandon uh, for his Adventures in Design solo interview. Yeah. And this was on the monitor it, that he was actually illustrating it like when I showed up. And then when I left, he went back to working on it. So I've actually seen uh, one of these. I don't think it's any of these, but I know I remember seeing Brandon work on an octopus. And I actually remember in that interview asking him questions about the illustration on his monitor. Yeah. 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 He worked on this. He did most of it. Um, <clears throat> so these are, so we showed the client, the, the, the slides above that. There was a couple other pieces involved in that as well. But so basically we narrowed it down with the client. We got, got him to agree that, Hey, the, the actual single tentacle as the S isn't really working. You know, it's heading the direction of let's try and make this work as a full octopus mm-hmm. and get in somehow work the S into that. So this is where we start to head in the direction of, okay, we're going to do, we're going to work with an octopus. Wow. Not just one tentacle. Yeah. The, uh, that's the, I believe, I don't know. Can't remember the one I saw him working on when I was there. Not important to the story, but yeah, this is definitely kind of changing the, the, the scope and the vibe of, of, of the whole thing, uh, moving over to the actual animal versus just where we started off with just simply making a, you know, a tentacle S. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is the final, final illustrations. So the one on the left, uh, became the main logo and icon. The one on the right was more of a horizontal. Mm-hmm. Usage. You know, what does this octopus look like if you stretch it out? Mm-hmm. Um, then we built out some tentacles on the bottom, right. That can be used on packaging or flourishes. Or yeah. Yeah. And, and the so, shark just for fun. Shark is just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a, he was kind of a fan of sharks and he kept going back. He had a T graphic that was a shark. So he's like, we need a shark's head. So Buy two octopuses, get one shark free. I love that. That's such a great package. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now, now it feels real. Now we got type. Now we got color. Here we go. Yep. So this is where we basically take that illustration and hand it off to Jordan, Dustin, and I think Davey did a did a set um, and kind of let them go wild with it. How, yeah. how are we going to type? What do the colors look like? And we, you know, kind of go from there. So these are some of the comps that we showed on that. I have to say, and I can, I have the ability to point at it. This particular one here that my mouse is on, I love that the Seaside Brewery looks like it's in um, some sort of like nautic crest there, almost like a life preserver or something that you would see on the, the mast of a, a ship. Like I really, really enjoy that one a lot. And as much as I love the independent illustration of the octopus on the go, um, it just is a little bit hard to see when it gets used in, in branding versus that um, straight on one just looks so good. Client happy at this moment when, when you present this over, did you solve the problem out of the gate or was, was there still a little bit of nitpicking? No client, client was super happy, super happy with the octopus and, the, and that, that main logo mm-hmm. uh, from here. As we started to work in type, he, the type he had from the previous company was very much, there were some nautical examples in there. There was some decent type. Um, he kind of expressed in the beginning, like most likely I want something that's super clean, super simple on the type. So you'll see kind of uh, in the end how it ended up, but yeah, it could have, I mean, we could have went very heavy with the nautical theme and uh, he, he was one who was like, ah, let's, let's not push too heavy because the octopus is already, is already doing its job. Yeah. Yeah. There's some really interesting type in this one. And, and a comment that we just got over on the, the live stream is uh, someone said, I love how there's a distinct style difference between this and the do series that we looked at earlier. And I really think that that's a big part of why you guys are so successful is having a, a team of six different minds it really gives you the ability to kind of come at different projects from different angles because not only do you have six different creatives, but you have, everybody has their own range of work. So, you know, 
whichever version of Brandon we get working with whichever version of Davey passed over to Jordan, you know, like that scenario of those three people working together is, is never going to be the same. And, um, I don't know the, the diversity I think is what makes being a graphic designer, um, in my mind, more challenging and more interesting than just being a traditional illustrator where maybe you work in the same style. Like my friend, Daniel Danger, you don't know what he's going to blow up, but every day he's going to blow up an old building and that's going to be what he does versus you guys. You know, it's a Yeti one day. And then maybe that same afternoon you jump over to the octopus while you're waiting to hear back from, from the, the do tour. Yeah. Yeah. And our projects, I mean, a lot of our projects that I feel like turn out the best, are the ones like this where somebody will handle a little piece of the il- illustration, hand it off to these guys and let them run with the type and the layout and yeah. the full design package. That's when they usually turn out the best. And that's what you've seen here. You know, they get the illustration from Brandon and the Maso and then, you know, uh, send that over to these guys. So now I'm changing my mind because octopus on the go bottom left-hand corner. That is a sick t-shirt i mean that is like everything that you would want on your chest i love that so much and the balancing out of oregon and usa such a pro move love that so much on all of these designs yeah so this is the final kit this kit is really really good and this is really diverse you know from being able to you know i'm seeing a t-shirt in here i'm seeing a coaster um there's a lot that a junior in-house guy that works for seaside could could just go from this logo package and always know this one fits here this one fits there we're sponsoring something this one goes on a banner like you really gave them a a lot of successful pieces to work with and now this is the before and after right yeah yeah one on the right is definitely dated you could you could tell sure Sure. And in the one that you guys made, and I think that this is why I love your style so much and something I always try to do. The one on the right is kind of, it is what it is. Like technically you could use the seaside brewing without anything behind it. You'd have to do a lot of cleanup. It'd be a little bit weird at that angle. It wouldn't always work for, you know, say the, the dreaded back of the 5k t-shirt, you know, your logos at a weird angle and also a rectangle. But what you guys presented there's just so many different ways that you can just use the type on its own or just use, you know, the, the top half of the octopus. You know what I mean? Like there's just literally so many different ways you could just use the, the, the S I mean, there's just so many different ways that you could pull it apart and use it. And I always think because branding has to do so much explaining and so much identifying with the client that it's really, really important to make something that has so many different uh, case usages. And now this, is this something that's in production or is just sort of a, a sample to show the client of like, Hey, this is also how it would go on packaged goods. No, this, this is in, in production. We actually did a bunch of different label designs. Um, this ended up being the final one. So yeah, it'll just be a clear wrap on a uh, crowler crowlers for the, uh, at the brewery. So we're, we're in the process of doing a whole apparel collection for them and, and everything. So they're a continual client now, man. Oh man. So Three st- outstanding pieces. First off, just the black on the silver can, perfect. You know that you don't need to overthink it. the The can itself, if you let the can work with the graphic, it does so much heavy lifting because it's metal and it's a you know it reflects the environment that's around it. So, well played on that. So the center of the can is just absolutely perfect. Just putting the logo on there, but the recycle or die and the the fresh beer banner going up to the top and then on the far right the 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 tentacle going around the the information like guys this is really really phenomenal basic i mean it's so so basic you guys didn't go all out with full color and stickers this that and the other like you just kept it to the basic you made it look like a punk flyer on a can and i love it (laughs) yeah yeah it's simple just simple and clean and i think the logo's detailed enough it can do all the work so exactly yeah Phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right. I have taken up enough of your time. You guys are busy. You got to go get to work. Dustin and Dan, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for talking to everybody and for showing the work and sharing your experiences. You you don't have to explain how all of this stuff works out for you, but you provide such an amazing tool to everybody who's looking at Instagram, looking at your portfolio and trying to figure out 
but how does this work? How do I get in this position? And when you guys do these conversations, I really think you give a lot of people advice on these are best practices. This is how it works for us and give them an idea of what to expect in the future. So on behalf of the audience, I thank you guys for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's always good to talk to you, Mark.